and today's message the title of it is God's garden God's garden turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 22 and many of you know this portion of scripture and as you're turning there give God all the glory give God all the praise for everything that he's doing in my life to be quite honest with you I feel stronger than I've ever felt before feeling better than I've ever felt before I'm actually lighter than I've ever been in before come on somebody many of you know I'm talking about you you're the same way you're getting skinnier and skinnier praise the Lord keep on man keep on it does something to you you're gonna feel great but I titled this message God's garden and I believe it's gonna minister to many of you here today it's a very familiar portion of scripture you've read it time and time again it reads like this Luke 22 verses 42 it's actually the account that's found in all the Gospels but it says father if it is your will take this cup away from me nevertheless not my will but yours be done now watch this then the angel an angel appeared to him from heaven watch this strengthening him and being in agony he prayed more earnestly then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground heavenly father we come before you this morning and lord i just thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to minister your word speak to the hearts of your people and lord today i give you all the praise i'm, I'm grateful and thankful for everything that you're doing and what you've done in my family lord god so lord i i thank you thank you for the privilege to stand before a great church great leaders a great congregation of people and i just pray that this word this morning god would minister to the hearts of your people we pray this all in jesus mighty name amen and amen before you're seated ask your neighbor when was the last time you visited the garden When was the last time you visited the garden? This morning, I want to take to you, talk to you, take a few moments and talk to you about God's garden. Or you can even look at it this way. Is that God's garden guides. God's garden guides. And even through the midst of things, because how many of us know we will experience things? We will experience life. We will experience trials. But we'll also experience great things when we give our lives to God. And there's a lot of things that happen in God's garden. And this message that I believe today will, will minister to you and, and, and give you a perspective and an insight when it comes to visiting a garden. There's a quote that I ran across and I... I, I felt it was pretty great maybe to share it and to encourage. And it reads like this. Life isn't waiting for the storms to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. Learning to dance in the rain. And sometimes we want the storms to pass. We don't like storms. We don't like trials. But sometimes you just got to get it in your spirit. You just got to learn to dance in the rain. You just got to learn how to dance through the storm. So... This is an account when Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray before he was betrayed. And we could see so much that was happening here at this very moment. Even as you read before and after this portion of scripture, you will find so much that was going on and that was taking place. And the Garden of Gethsemane was on the slope of the Mount Olives. And it was up on a hill above everything else. And how many of us know that when you're up on a hill or you're higher, you always see things different? And I believe that that's something to catch a hold of because many times when we're in the valley, it's very difficult to be able to see what's ahead of us. But when you're on the hill, that's where the garden was at. When you're on a hill, you see things different, especially when you're on a hill and God's garden is there, you begin to see things different. 
this morning, even as I'm elevated on this stage, I could see every single one of you. I could see you on your phone. Come on, somebody. I could see you talking. Come on, somebody. I could see you walking around. I can even see you nodding a little bit. You could see everything when you're elevated. And how many of us know that's a powerful thing? Because sometimes it's very difficult to see things when you're in the valley. There's another quote that I ran across I'll share with you. It says, for every mountain, there is a miracle. So don't ever underestimate the mountains that you have to climb. Don't underestimate the mountains that you have to begin to go up in life. Because at every mountain, there is a miracle. And there may be something, there may be some things that we can realize after reading this scripture is that we have, we too have garden moments. We have garden moments. And, and, and I like to call them God's garden. So this morning, I'm going to give, I'm going to give you this message just the way the Lord gave it to me. See, God's garden, the garden of Gethsemane means oil press. If you begin to research it and look at it, 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 the meaning of it is oil press, Gethsemane, a place of pressing. And at times in God's garden, we don't like to feel the pressure of pressing. Because in life or even in ministry or maybe in the place you are today, you may be feeling pressure of the pressing of life. Or maybe God is doing something in you and there's pressure that's on you right now, and you don't like pressure. You don't like the stretching. We don't like the challenges. We don't like it when we're forced or we're challenged to make changes within our lives. But how many of us know if we're ever going to be the church or the people that God has called us to be, there's going to have to be change within our lives. There's going to be some pressure, and there's going to be some pressing on your life. So the Garden of Gethsemane meant oil pressing. See, we can look at God's garden as a place of pain or a place of guiding. You can either look at God's garden as a place of pain or a place of guiding, or even I like to put it like this, a place of building. I choose to look at it as a place of guiding. And I never, I never realized it or I never really looked at God's garden as a place of guiding. I always felt and looked at it as a place of pain. But there was so much that was taking place right here with our Savior. And I believe if we could get a hold of this message here today, I believe it will change your perspective of when it comes to spending time in God's garden. So there's three things that I want to bring out. And this is what the Lord gave me. And I want to give it to you here today. The first thing that takes place in God's gar garden is that surrendering comes when you're in the garden. Surrendering comes when you, while you're in the garden. See, Jesus realized who could not go to the cross on his own strength, but he needed the Heavenly Father. And how many of us know today is that we cannot go through the things we go through or experience some of the things that life will throw at us at our own strength. But it's going to require the surrenderance of your own will. And as you begin to surrender, you will get breakthrough. Now, there's a familiar portion of Scripture that many of you know. I know the home knows this very well. And many of you already know what it is. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord. Come on now. Trust in the Lord. Don't trust in Renee. Don't trust in Isaac. Don't trust in Freddie. I'm just using you guys. You guys are my props this morning. Right? It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not. Come on, somebody. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And if you notice, that's usually where you stop. But you should take a look at verse 7. It reads like this. is Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. See, Jesus knew that he could not go to the cross. 
He could not be arrested. He could not go through what he was going to go through on his own understanding. And he had to surrender his will. So church, I want you to know is that when you surrender, when you surrender your will and you surrender your life, God will see you through the situations and the circumstances that you will face. But many times I've experienced is that the surrendering takes place, the most best place is when you're in the garden. See, the word surrender means to give up or to yield or to simply just back down from your own agenda. You know, many times we don't like to back down from our own agenda. And sometimes your own agenda is not God's agenda. But when you learn to yield, back down, and give up your own will, and you surrender your life, God will strengthen you, and you will see breakthrough within your life. And that was something that I had to experience while we were going through what me and my family were going through last year. I, I, I remember finding myself, I had this place where I would pray and, and just kind of look out the window and look at the mountains and just, I was reminded of God's creation. And I remember, uh, you know, for me, for some of you that know me and, and around me, I, I, I like to have this mentality that, you know, uh, I'm going to do my part, get it done. And, and, and I'm going to work very hard and all these different things. But the Lord be, began to, to rebuke me and says, you know what? Stop trying to get in the way of the miracle that I want to do. Because I would come in and, and, and begin to say, well, maybe this. And, you know, try to rationalize the situation. You ever done that? You try to rationalize the situation. You try to make sense of the situation. And you try to say something that's going to make the situation better. And I remember sitting right there. And I remember the Lord began to tell me, stop trying to explain what you cannot explain. Because what's going to happen has got nothing to do with you. Has got nothing to do with people. It's got everything to do with my miraculous power. Oh, and I fought it for months and weeks and weeks and weeks. And I just felt myself struggling and struggling and struggling. This man of God with, with, with faith and power. Until I got a hold of it and I totally surrendered. I said, okay, God, then, then you got to do it. He goes, well, thank you. That's all I wanted you to do. Get out of the way. And stop trying to rationalize. Stop trying to make excuses. And try, stop trying to explain to your daughter. Let me do the work that I've been sent to do. And that is to do a miracle through this situation. But you know, sometimes it's hard to surrender. It's hard to back down. It's hard to give something up. See, when you find yourself in God's garden... Don't try to be the gardener. Let God pluck out what he wants. And sometimes we don't like God to pluck those certain things out. Because he plucks out the things that contaminate our faith. He plucks out those things that have no business in our life. And God began to pluck out some doubt and some things that did not belong in my life. See, God, we got to remember this, is that God always tends his garden. God always tends his garden because he knows we need him. So he is always there. Get a hold of that today. God knows we need him. God knows that we need him. So understand this. He will always be there. He will always meet your need. He will always give you the strength that you need. But all you got to do is just surrender. All you got to do is surrender your will. Let him work on you. And he will give you the breakthrough that you need. He tends his own garden. See, in the garden is where Jesus prayed. See, and if you find yourself in the garden, all God wants you to do is talk to him. See, when I was in the garden... I found myself talking to everybody else, but talking to God. You may say, well, weren't you praying? Yes, I was praying, but I was, I was trying to tell God what to do. I was trying to tell him how I wanted him to work out the situation. See, because when you're going through things or you're going through a trial, we, sometimes we have a tendency to try to tell God what he needs to do. 
We start telling them, God, I want you to do it this way. God, I want you to do it that way. And God, I need you to do it this way. And all of a sudden, God says, I, I have no intentions of doing it that way. Because if I do it that way, then I will not get all the glory. But when I do it in a way where it blows the people's mind, then he gets all the glory. So if you find yourself in the garden, all it is is God wants you to talk to him. God wants you to begin to share with him what you're real, what's really going on in life. And then, the, then here, here, here's the kicker, if you want to call it. Just be quiet and listen. Just be quiet and listen. You know, some of us, we talk too much. You talk way too much. Right? You ever been in a conversation? You can't even get a, you can't even get a, a little bit of room in there to say something. They're always talking. I wonder how you are in your prayer. Always talking. We don't let God speak to us. But when you learn to submit your will and you back down and you give up and you yield, maybe then you'll hear. And that's what I had to learn. I had to learn to back down, give up my will, and yield and let God speak to me. See, in the garden is where Jesus accepts the hour of his betrayal. See, when you know God is with you, you are ready for what this world will throw at you. You are ready for what this world will throw at you. See, in the garden, you will be ready to accept the things that you've got to go through. And many times it, 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 it may not be trials, but it may be a stretching, it may be a pressing, it may need to be a change within your life so that you can be everything that God has called you to be. Give the Lord a good praise here this morning. Come on. See, in the garden, you're built to believe. You're built to believe when you're in God's garden. The second thing is this. First thing is, what do we do? Did you learn? Is that you learn to surrender. What else happened in God's garden? Strength comes while you're in the garden. Surrender comes while you're in the garden. And strength comes while you're in the garden. See, uh, angels were sent to Jesus in God's garden. And what did it do? It strengthened him. He was able to pray even more. The Bible says as he began to talk to the Lord, and if you notice the conversation, he, 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 he was like us. You know, He didn't want to have to take this cup. He didn't want to have to go through the trials and the experience that he had to go through. And I believe that was the human side of him. He said, Lord, if it is your will, then take this cup from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And then what happened is that God sent him an angel. And what did it say? That he was strengthened and he was able to even pray more earnestly. And as the strength was sent to him, he was able to continue on the mission that was planned for his life. See, understand this. Angels come to comfort and minister to the believers. And Jesus was strengthened and ministered to so he was able to pray even more earnestly. I like what was happening in 1 Kings chapter 19. Many of you know the story, but let me just read you a few verses. This was happening in Elijah. After he had a great victory, then his life was threatened. And what happened was is he began to get fatigued. Because how many of us know that sometimes when you get fatigued, you don't think right? Right? When you get spiritually fatigued, you don't think right. And sometimes when you're fatigued, you make the wrong decisions. And this is what was happening here in Elijah. Let me read a few verses to you. 1 Kings chapter 19. You can read it later on. Verses 4 through 8. It reads like this. It says, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. This was after his victory. And he came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die. And ever just felt like just giving up? He said that I, that I might die and said, it is enough now, Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then it goes on to read there in verse 5. Then as he laid and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, arise and eat. Then he looked and there by his head was a cake baked on coals. And a jar of water. So he ate and drank 
and lay down again. Verse 7 says, And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights as far as Hebron to the mountain of God. See, God will always send help. God will always send what you need for the journey that he has for your life. Come on, you ought to give the Lord some praise for that. He will always send what you need. But here's the thing is that we got to respond to the help that he sends. See, God always knows what we need. And he will always send help to his children. He may send it in the form of angels. He may send it in the form of a brother or sister to be able to encourage us and help us. But what happened here with Jesus is that he was strengthened by an angel. And see, Jesus went through agony in the garden. But no matter how hard it got, he was able to walk in his calling. See, in the garden, you will be strengthened. So I'll ask you a question. When was the last time you visited the garden? If you're here today and say, you know what, I need strength, I need encouragement, then I got news for you. Just walk on up to the garden. Walk on up to God's garden, and he will fill you with strength. He will give you what you need, and he will be able to strengthen your life for what he's called you to do. See, Jesus went through agony in the garden, but Jesus was also betrayed in the garden. And the best place... To face opposition is in God's garden. Many times we like to go out on our own. And all of a sudden we face opposition. And we wonder why we struggle. Let me just give you an inside secret. The best place to face opposition is in the house of God. The best place to face opposition is when you're around your brother and sister. Not out there alone. Not by yourself. Not away from the house of God. That's why I always tell brothers and sisters in the home, just stay in the house. Stay in the house. Man, I'm going through it. I'm, I'm struggling. Things are happening. I don't understand. Just stay in the house because in the house of God, there is protection. There is wisdom. God will strengthen you. God will meet you. Just stay in the house. Jesus was strengthened in the garden. So you, gotta, uh, you can look at the garden as a place of pain or a place of building. I choose it to be a place of building. See, Jesus was betrayed in the garden. And, and the best place to experience opposition is to stay in the house of God. But also Jesus was arrested in the garden. Come on, somebody. Went through agony, was betrayed, and he was arrested. See... Hurt may happen in the garden, but all that means is that heaven is going to be opened up over your life. Heaven is going to be opened up over your life. And the best place to experience any trial, any circumstance is in God's garden. Because he will meet you there. He will strengthen you there. And he will be able to do in your life. What we need every single day. And that's the anointing and the power of God upon our life. Come on and give the Lord some praise this morning. Come on, give him a strong praise. Come on, give him a, give him a praise like you don't mind staying in the garden. Come on now. Because in the garden, man, is where God will strengthen you. See, you're built for battle in the garden. You're built for battle in the garden. Look what Jesus went through. He, he, was, he was betrayed. He went through agony. He was arrested. And what did it do? It built him for the biggest battle he would ever have to face. And I got news for you here today. When you're in God's garden and you let God work on you and you stay there, then God will build you for battle. And that's something that the Lord began to speak to me is that I'm going to prepare you. I'm going to prepare you not just as a normal soldier, but I'm going to prepare you as an elite soldier for my kingdom, for battles that you will have to begin to lead people into. And I don't know about you, but I would rather be in a battle where I'm going to win, where I'm going to fight, and where I'm going to see success and victory. 
But a lot of times, many times, you don't learn how to have victories in battle until you go through a battle yourself. You know, there, there's many people that, um, you know, for me, I, I'm just real intrigued about our U.S. military. You know, and I, I'm like, man, you know what? If, if, if I wouldn't have got all messed up when I was younger, I would be in the military. You know, I, I just like, I just, I just dig their whole style. Right? All of all the branches. I just dig their whole styles. Like, man, I'll take a little bit of everybody and be Rambo. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I'm working on the six pack like Rambo. Come on, somebody. Right? But man, many times the thing about it is, is that you, you, you don't know how to fight unless you've been trained. And 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 when I was in battle. I couldn't help but just to remember my training. So you're built for battle when you're in God's garden, spiritually. And that's why it's so important that we get involved and we can continue to grow spiritually. And do you know that we have all the resources to be able to do that? I'm grateful for the trainings that I've sat in in Victory Outreach San Diego. I'm grateful for the trainings that I got a hold of when I was there in the church, Victory Outreach in Fresno. I'm grateful because it prepared me for battle. You, you, many of you may think, oh, we just want you to sa- sign up for family life. Well, no, that's going to prepare you for battle. You're going to grow. You're going to get equipped. You're going to get trained. And when you're trained and you're equipped, you're going to know how to fight when things come your way. That's God's garden. Because what happens is God begins to speak to you. All of a sudden, you're in your life group, and you're in the men of valor, your marriage encounter, Bible encounter. All you're doing is getting prepared. And then when you're getting prepared and all of a sudden you're in God's garden, God, God begins to speak to you, begins to strengthen you. We go through things and then all of a sudden you become this giant for the kingdom. Not just so you could be paraded around, but so you could stand and dance in the midst of the storm. So the second point is that you're strengthened in the garden. And my third and final point. So the first point was is, Surrender happens in the garden. Strength happens in the garden. And the third and final thing is submitting comes while you're in the garden. Submitting comes while you're in the garden. Some of us need the garden just to learn this. Because some of us don't like to submit. I knew that would hit you. You don't like to submit. You don't like to listen. Come on, somebody. You don't listen to the Holy Ghost. You don't listen to the Word. Sure, you don't listen to the pastor, the leaders. Come on, somebody. That's what I tell people sometimes. This is, I'm, I'm freestyling right now. Let me just throw it in there. But the thing about it is, like, man, you ain't even going to listen to God. What makes you think you're going to listen to me? can't tell you anything. I got already done told you. Submit. Well, I had to learn the hard way. I had, I had to learn the hard way. You know, because I, I, I thought I knew how to do some things. Come on now, don't leave me up here by myself. <laughs> Many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. You think you know how to do things. You, you, you think you know how to make that situation work. I got news for you. You don't know how to make that situation work better than God. You don't know how to make that situation work better than the scriptures say to do it. But if we would learn to listen to the scriptures and listen to God, I'll tell you right now, you will find yourselves growing leaps and bounds when you learn to submit. See, submitting comes while you're in the garden. Twice. Jesus prayed to God, take this cup from me, this cup of suffering. Because he submitted his will, and when he submitted, he received supernatural power. He did it twice. Because I'm sure in the natural, I'm sure in the flesh, sometimes we want to take things into our own hands. 
But when we learn to submit, supernatural power began to come upon his life. See, when we learn to submit to God, then we will follow God's plan. You know why we don't follow God's plan? Because we don't submit. See, you don't hear that word submit many times in the church, but if you're going to follow God's plan, you're going to have to submit. Can you say that word? See, some of you are all over the place. It don't come natural. It doesn't come freely within your life. See, because you know you don't do it. So let's shame the devil and do it all together. On the count of three. One, two, three. Okay. See how powerful that was? When you learn to submit, there is supernatural power that comes upon your life. There's an anointing upon your life. There's an anointing in your ministry. There is power in what you do. There is power in what you touch. Because you submit to the call of God. And the only way you learn that submit is when you're in God's garden. Supernatural power begins to fall upon your life. When you learn to submit, then you will follow God's plan. Because God's plan always requires a sacrifice of will. Always requires a sacrifice of will. you got to be able to sacrifice and submit your will. What did Jesus say? Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And he knew he was going to be betrayed. He knew he was going to be arrested. He knew he was going to have to go through pain. He knew he was going to be tortured. He knew he was going to die and rise on the third day. But he was able to submit his will because of his obedience to the the Heavenly Father. But it will always require sacrifice. Some of you are feeling that pressure right now. It's to sacrifice my will. And when you sacrifice your will, then you will always be able to. To follow God's plan for your life. Give the Lord a good praise. I'm almost done. Come on, give him a strong praise. Come on, give him a good praise like you're ready to submit. See, when our life is submitted, we will see miracles. When our life is submitted, we will see miracles. Come to the keyboard and get ready to play, Matt. Luke 22, if you jump down a couple verses there in verse 49, it reads like this. It says, when those around him saw what was going to happen, they said to him, here's the disciples in the flesh, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? Remember the disciples, what happened to them? They fell asleep. Right? Right? They fell asleep. They couldn't stay awake even an hour. So what happened is they were in the flesh. Say that. Say flesh. That's right. They were in the flesh. And look at their response. It says, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? The way they they think, the way she needed to get done, right? And then it goes on to read there in verse 50. and It says, one of them struck the servant of the high priest. And cut off his right ear. See, if they would have been praying, they would have realized it was a spiritual battle and not a physical battle. See, remember, when you're praying and you're up high, you see things different. And when you're you're, uh, attentive to what God is doing in your life and and, and, and you've surrendered and you're strengthened and you're submitted, you see things different. You don't move in the flesh, but you move in the spirit. But then in verse 51, it says, but Jesus answered and said, permit even this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Jesus healed the ear of his enemy. See, miracles will always be attached to your submission. And it does not matter what comes your way, who comes your way, or what the devil may throw at you. You will see miracles based upon your submission and letting God do the work in your life. You want to see miracles? You want to see breakthrough? Then just submit your will. Just surrender your life 
totally and completely to God and watch him do miracles and breakthrough within your life. And that's what I've learned. I needed a breakthrough. I needed a miracle. I needed I needed something to happen. When you get into a desperate situation, you need something to happen. Back in the day, we always did it upon ourselves to try to make something happen. And usually it didn't work out the way we wanted it to work out. But I believe that every single person in this auditorium here this morning, I believe every one of us have submitted, have, have seen a breakthrough and a miracle within our lives. You may say, I, I haven't experienced one like you have. Yes, you have. Remember the day that you submitted your life to God. Remember when the courts or the people or your friends said that you will never change. That you can never get out of the system. You can never get a breakthrough. But the moment you submitted your life and your will, look at where you are today. Look at what God has done in your life today. You are the biggest miracle on the face of this earth. Stand to your feet. You're the biggest miracle. But what did you do? You submitted your life. And I know it wasn't easy. Right? You were battling. You didn't have much. You didn't know if you could do this. All you got was a word from somebody that was ministering, whether it was on the street corner or whether it was on the pulpit. Whether it was in a drama, whether it was an event, all you had was a, just an ounce of hope that something could change within your life. But what happened is when you submitted your life, a miracle took place. A breakthrough happened in your life. But here's the thing, is we know how this story ended. We know that Jesus was beaten and he was killed for us. But on the third day, I'll say it again, on the third day, on the third day, he bounced back from that trial. He rose from the grave. He didn't let nothing hold him down. So I got news for you. If you would submit in the garden, in God's garden, you will bounce back. You will rise from the ashes of defeat. You will bounce back. See, God knew the plan all along. We serve an almighty God. We serve an all-knowing God. He knew the plan all along for Jesus, his son. And I want you to know this, is that God knows the plans for his children. And you are his children. And that plan is not for you to stay down, but it's for you to bounce back. It's for you to overcome. It's for you to rise up. You were not saved and you were not called to stay down, to stay in defeat, to stay in trial, to stay in suffering. But he's called you to be victorious. He's called you to have a breakthrough. He's called you to live in miracles. He's called you to give him all the praise. So the last thing is that in God's garden, you will be built to bounce back. How many ready to bounce back here this morning? Come on, how many ready to bounce back here this morning? God's garden. You can either look at it as a place of pain or a place of building. When you look at it as a place of building, a place of growing, God will begin to change your perspective in a whole nother level. So as we get ready to sing this song, we say, you know what?